Meg fished through her purse. He wasn't any trouble, was he? Tara, her school books tucked under one arm, shook her head so vigorously that her hair fluttered around her face. Nah, he went to bed early, and he hasn't stirred since. Good. Meg produced a promised twenty dollars, and added an extra five. She'd been away for nearly an hour longer than she'd anticipated, and she could only be grateful that Tara was patient enough to wait for her. Tara said her goodbyes and hurried to her car, while Meg let herself into the house. The building was still and dark. Meg didn't expect her husband home for another hour or two. It was football night for him, and sometimes he wouldn't come home until the early morning, tired and delighted, smelling of cheap beer. Meg dropped her car keys and purse onto the kitchen counter, then went to her son's room. She kept the hall light off and pressed the door open gently, expecting Riley to be asleep. The boy was sitting bolt upright in his bed, though, and he gasped when Meg opened the door. She turned on the light and went to him. Hey, honey, what's wrong? His dark eyes, so much like his father's, blinked at her from under long lashes. Bad dream. His eyes immediately turned to the window. Want to tell me about it? Meg asked, sitting on the edge of his bed. She could hear their dog, Jasper, barking in the yard. Somebody's gotten him worked up. I have to check on him before bed. Riley gave his mother a sidelong glance, but hesitated, seemingly uncertain how to start. Have you ever heard of the bog rot? Meg quirked her eyebrows up. Nope. What's that? Tara was telling me about them. Riley shrugged and pulled the blankets further up his body. She says one's been following her. Meg pursed her lips. She shouldn't be telling you scary stories, especially not before bedtime. Riley's huge eyes turned back to Meg, desperately sincere in his desire not to get his babysitter in trouble. Don't blame Tara. I made her, I begged her and I begged her to tell me the scariest stories she could. She didn't really want to, but I made her tell me about the bog rot. Bog rot sounded like exactly the sort of name a young adult would choose for a fictional monster. Meg sighed. OK, why don't you tell me about this bog rot, and I'll tell you if I think it's scary. Riley shrugged. She could tell he was trying to look nonchalant, but the way his eyes kept flicking to the window gave him away. Well, he said, speaking slowly, she said there was a monster which she called the bog rot that used to follow her around at night. She didn't like going outside after dark because of it. Meg followed her son's eyes to the window, where the moonlight pierced the thick trees at the back of the yard. Jasper's barking was becoming more frantic. He's probably found a raccoon. And what exactly does a bog rot do? It makes squelching noises when it follows her. She says it hides in the shadows so it's hard to see, but it has yellow eyes and really long claws. That sounds ridiculous. He's getting too old to be frightened of monsters. And it scared you so badly you had a nightmare. Riley bristled. You didn't hear the way she described it, like it could really be there, waiting for me to step outside, waiting for you. He shivered and pulled his blanket still higher. And I thought I heard you call Jasper from the back of the garden, and Jasper was barking and barking and barking, and then suddenly there was a snap of huge teeth, and... Riley turned his huge eyes towards his mother. Meg felt a stab of guilt for teasing her son. Of course an eight-year-old would be disturbed if he dreamed his pet had been eaten. She pulled Riley into a hug and squeezed him tightly. Hey, it's okay. The bog rot didn't get Jasper. You can hear him barking, can't you? He's fine. Mm, yeah, Riley said, although he didn't sound convinced. It seems so real, though. It can't have been, honey. Meg brushed Riley's golden blonde hair out of his face and kissed his forehead. I only just got home. There's no way I could have been calling Jasper. Riley hesitated, and Meg guessed she wasn't getting the full story. She raised her eyebrows at him in silent question, and he shrugged. 
it's just the other thing Tara said she said the bug rot can imitate human voices so it could have been the bug rot at the back of the yard calling Jasper and he thought it was you and and Riley shook his head and squeezed his eyes closed never mind never mind I don't want to think about it Meg sighed she had no idea what Tara had been thinking coming up with such a ghastly story the only comfort was Jasper's persistent barking Meg gave her son's forehead a kiss and then stood and approached the window. The clear moonlight painted over the closer patches of grass, but the trees filled the back of the yard with shadows. A glint of silver caught Meg's eyes and she saw a dog tag lying on the ground next to fur, a clump of fur, golden brown, with blood-stained tips, laying next to Jasper's tag. Meg raised her eyes, searching the yard for the barking dog, and saw two faintly glowing globes hidden in the shadows at the back of the yard. Then the globes blinked as the bog rot barked and barked and barked.